Hello and welcome to the Next Gen Racing YouTube channel for our weekend preview. Jack and I are together. Uh, there's been a few technical problems, but we're here. We're getting things done um, and we're, we're looking forward to an excellent weekend's action. Jack, look, we know what race we're looking forward to on Saturday, and that's the big clash between Enigamain and Shishkin. Um, but there's plenty of other great action across the weekend, including the, the Winter Millions Festival. We will kind of briefly talk about that. And then we've got Haydock and also the rest of the card at Ascot. Looking forward to it? Yeah, I can't wait, actually. I mean, it's great to see Linkfield have some top-class action. Of course, the, the the Clash of the Titans, where they both run their big race and Lube Negra will come pick up the pieces in the champion chase, eh? but no, can't wait. Yeah, it really is going to be an excellent race. We're going to preview that last. We've got two races we're going to preview from Haydock and two races that we'll be previewing from Ascot before giving our best bets for the weekend. Um, just a quick announcement on Tuesday next week, I think Jack and I are going to look to bring you kind of an anti-post preview of the championship races. From the Cheltenham Festival, uh, we'll try and be joined by a guest. They're not sure who, but I'm sure someone will be willing to join us. Well, we'll also announce our Cheltenham Festival preview um, and what's officially going on with that and when that will appear on your screen. Because it's going to be an absolute corker this year um, where we, we are working with Racing Ahead. They're going to be doing a lot of work with our preview. And you can check out the magazine and the links down in the description. But let's crack on with the preview. We'll kick things off at Haydock, Jack, if that's OK. Um, we'll start there. It's Peter Marsh Chase Day there, but we're going to kick off things. We'll, we'll quickly discuss, actually, the uh, Sky Bet Supreme, the Supreme Trial there, because, look, I'm not going to go through the odds or anything like that, but it's the 125. We just get to see John Bond there. Now, John Bond versus Constitution Hill is now probably confirmed for the Supreme. We've now got Sir Gerhard and Dysart Dynamo thrown in the mix now, but it's exciting to see that, you know, these two for the Kenson Yard are going to probably be taking on each other. I think Nick Henson described it as a banker on Thursday that this could be happening. Uh, I mean, it sounds really harsh on John Bond, but he's got to be really impressive here to put his name right in the picture. Yeah, yeah I completely agree. It'll be interesting to see if they try and stretch him out and win by 15, 20 lengths, or they kind of just want a, a race call, a race horse, um, sorry, a race course gallop under his belt. So it'll be interesting to see how he goes there. At the moment, Constitution Hill edges it for me out of the, the seven barrows battalion. But look, they're both they're both clearly two milers, and that's going to be their optimal trip. I doubt they're going to get too much further at the moment. And I can't wait for it to happen. Jean Bond should go in here quite with consummate ease and hopefully all, all roads lead to the Supreme. Yeah, that's why there's no need to really preview this race. I think John Bond will be going with ease, but it's interesting to see kind of, you know, what we think of this horse and where we think he stands in the Supreme Market at the moment. We know the Irish are dominant. We've seen the performance from Dysart Dynamo. Does he go to the Supreme? Does he go to the Ballymore? Um, at the moment, it seems like a Supreme type to me, the way he performs. So it's going to be really fascinating. It's excellent to see John Bond back out um, and hopefully making the Supreme Market as competitive as it looks. Now, let's go on to the, the big hurdle race on the Saturday there. It's the two o'clock. This is the new one hurdle, grade two over two miles. Tommy Zoska is your eight to 11 favourite here. Hunter's call for the Ollie Murphy team's five to Navajo past 12 to one. Rocker Den is 14 to one. Global Citizen 25 to one. And Gary de Julie is 66 to one. Now, Jack, Tommy Zoska, um, described by Paul Keeley, is probably the best British contendant for the champion hurdle. Um, which I personally disagree. I think Adagio is still the one that put this horse up for the champion hurdle. But I do think that potentially he could be vulnerable to this call here. I don't actually think the bookmakers have got it quite right. Now, I just think that with regards to this horse, um, beating a, a horse that has since come out and been absolutely smashed, that was Geronimo, who he beat in December. Um, did it, only oh, just did it. And Geronimo, like I say, since been beaten quite comfortably and then beat Christopher Wood the last day. Um, and Christopher Wood, for me, isn't really the, the best type of horse that I'd be looking forward to going forward. I know he did it with ease, but I just think the Hunter's Call just has a, a much better edge on form, in my opinion. The, the third last time out, finishing ahead of, you know, some de decent horses, Heaven Help Us, Sky Royale, even the mighty Bally Adam um, in the international hurdle. I do think that potentially that form, to me, sits a lot better. Uh, I was travelling really strongly at Cheltenham that day and I think the same could happen again. And I just think that potentially the, the odds on favourite here could be taken down. Do you have the same opinion or do you think the favourite will go in? I think he's probably a worthy favourite. I mean, I can't really back Hunter School. He's a 12-year-old. I'm not really going to be going in for a champion hurdle trial, if you if you can almost call it that, for um for a 12-year-old. But look, Tommy's Oscar is definitely on a big upgrade. I mean, as you say, 6-4 mm. and does look awfully short. If there's one thing this race does emphasise, it's just how poor the, the British two-mile hurdlers are. They really are poor. I know you've been going on about it yourself, and I completely agree. I mean, it's kind of vindicated here. I mean... 
there is one that I'm going to give one last chance to, and that's Navajo Pass, who won this last year. And he's, he's a double figure prize at the moment. He's about 12 to 1 with, with the informed Brian, Brian Hughes on board. But I mean, last year he put together a cracking performance in this, getting the better of both Adair, who then, of course, finished fourth in the Aintree hurdle next time out. Um, at Sandown, the last twice, he's been very, very disappointing, it is fair to say. But I mean, he loved the course last year. He loved the soft conditions. Hopefully, we can get a bit more rain for him. And he's only a six year old. It seems like people kind of forget get that there could be more to come and there could be a lot more improvement there and hopefully he'll be able to bounce back so I'll probably be staying away from the 12 year old Hunter's call and, and the short favourite uh, Tommy's Oscar and I'll probably give a, a little each way shout to Navajo Pass There we go, okay, interesting from Jab I'm going to be with Hunter's call despite being 12 I just think since she's going to win this race I'm not looking this, at this race as a champion hurdle trial, um, I think this is in my opinion just a grade 2 in itself and could be probably some of these horses big big races of the season so be interesting to see how they get on there the final race we're going to preview um at haydock is the peter marsh handicap chase um where what it looks like we're going to see royal pagai back out now it's a grade two handicap it's the 235 though over three and a quarter miles so royal pagai is your three to one favorite here best price empire still and remastered both fives lord de manil is eight to one kaluki and lakeview lad tens uh fortesque is 12 and 14 to one and bigger the rest now Jack, what do we need to see potentially here from Royal Pagai to really announce himself as a potential Gold Cup each way shout? I'll probably say uh, just a comfortable victory, maybe if he's stretching clear at the line by four or five lengths. I mean, regardless of almost what he does uh, this weekend, because I think I don't know about the injury and how much that's going to have an effect on him. Yeah. I think if we do get a bog in March, I think he's definitely going to be up there. And I think he's probably going to be about 14, 16 to one, probably regardless of what he does this weekend. I mean, it's a cracking little renewal, isn't it? I mean, remastered, obviously, is carrying over a stone less than Royal Bagai, which is a little bit ridiculous in my eyes. Of course, he was pretty unlucky when he was travelling an absolute dream when he took that big tumble at Newbury in the Labricks Trophy. And I mean, it'd be great for, to see him do that. I've seen, uh, to do this, I've seen there's been quite a lot of money for him that's come lately but for me I think Royal Pagai's price is, is more than fair I mean there's been a lot of money come for him as well he opened up at 5-1 to one. he's now 3-1 to one. he's carrying 11 stone 10 the same as last year when he absolutely romped her I mean the way the main worry for me would be is he going to get enough rain because I don't know if there's going to be that much rain you've got soft ground at the moment of course it was heavy last year so that'd be my main concern at the moment but I think after his performance in the Betfair Chase, where let's not forget he was injured when he was running in the Betfair Chase and also the ground was good to soft. He doesn't really want good to soft ground. I know he was beaten 20 lengths by a red hot Apple Tard, but he finished 25 lengths clear of Chatham Street Lad, which isn't a bad performance whatsoever. To me, he's kind of become an almost forgotten horse in the Gold Cup. And I think you could be looking at 14, 16, maybe even 12 to 1 with a with a big performance here. He's become a little bit forgotten. The market's in disarray as well. Let's not forget that. So I think with the Gold Cup market in disarray, I hope he can put, get, uh, put together a stellar round of jumping and hope hopefully romp him here and cement his Gold Cup claims. Yeah, I really do. I do think he's a classy horse. The one worry I don't like horses who are coming off uh, the back of a, a bit of a setback and it is, you know, we'll have to see how he gets on there. But I'm going to be with a horse that I think is going to win here. It's a win bet. And God, this horse is becoming a, a bit of a cliff horse already for me and it will be remastered. Like Jack said there, look, carrying a hell of a lot less than the last one. I thought he ran exceptionally well off the way he did the last day at Haydock. Um, he showed that he loved the fences and, and we know Royal Pagai has caught Storm as well winning this race before but remastered showed that he loved the fence he was beaten for weight that day he really was um, but he looked exceptional he's actually carrying two pounds less than what the winner did that day um, that beat him and I just think that it's a, a bit of a fastest rating of 146 still I genuinely think that if he had won that Ladbrokes trophy how I thought he was going to win that Ladbrokes trophy he's going to be sort of a 152 153 rated chaser I genuinely do think that could have been the case and I did have this horse in mind for potentially going to the Ultima um, off the mark that he's currently off and uh, technically on, on statistics he probably would have a, a fair chance of 146 so it'll be interesting to see how he gets on here if he does win this race he's obviously not going to be rated that and will probably be marked up to the 150 mark um, but I just think that potentially he has all the class a, a bit like Royal for guy probably needs that rain to come another horse that does like it on the softer side uh, Lord de Manil is probably more of a cliff horse than Remaster is going to be becoming. Um, but I think it, it does lie between the, the top of the market. I'm not a massive fan of Empire still, but 
I think it'll be between Royal Pagai and Remaster, and it'll be another one where I think if Remaster does win this, it's just going to be due to the weights. I do think the Royal Pagai, as long as returning from that setback in full fitness, I think the horse is far better and off level weights would probably destroy Remastered. But um, I think the weight might just catch uh, Royal Pagai out and Remastered may just go in here. Um, and that's going to be my selection for the Peter Marsh chase. Jack with Royal Pagai and myself with Remastered. Let's go over to Ascot now and I'm getting excited already we've got one more race to preview before we get to hear both of our opinions on the big clash um, we'll kick things off with the 220 there it's the SBK Mayor's Hurdle a three mile hurdle for the Mayor's it's another grade two to fit into a fantastic weekend of racing Western Victory and Molly Ollie's wishes they're the five to two joint favourites here my sister Sarah 11 to 4. Anything for love, 10 to 1. White Hot Chili Philly. I know you gave that horse a big mention at Sandown Jack, 16 to 1. And Impressive Lady is 20 to 1. I actually think there could be a huge boost to the form here of that grade three mare's hurdle at Leopardstown um, over the Christmas period. And I think that uh, my sister Sarah could go and win this, Jack. Um, only finished, I think, 12 lengths behind the current mare's, fa uh, mare's hurdle favourite. Tell me something, girl. Um, he ran an almighty race that day and will definitely come on for that run. But tell me something, girl was third that day and finished 12 lengths behind and Royal Kahala obviously won that race. I just think that could potentially be a really decent uh, bit of form in terms of the mares. This horse will love the trip really well. It's come over to Kempton before. We've seen this horse come over and do the business over this trip. So a flat tr track like Ascot will probably be suiting uh, Paul Townend over. It'll be interesting to see if he's come over for one winner or two winners at Ascot. Um, but I think I'd probably be rather backy at the moment, a bit of a clue to who I'm going to be selecting the, the next potentially. But I'd probably be thinking that uh, my sister Sarah is going to be his winner this weekend at Ascot. Um, and I think she's going to go in here around 11 to 4. What about yourself, Jack? Yeah, I'm with you. I think it's it, it, it comes with time with these mayors races, like the listed grade three. I know, I know this is grade two races, but the mayors, the mayors races, they always are a little bit of a muddle to me. Um, well, when you look at them, I mean, the Sandown race as well was kind of a, another example of that. They're always a, a little bit where you have co-favourites or joint favourites. We kind of have co-favourites here with the front three in the market. And yeah, I'm with you with my sister Sarah. I mean, Molly Ollie's wishes and Western Victory, I, I'm never really too much of a fan of. And I just think my sister Sarah is so unexposed to this trip that she could improve big time. I mean, on her sixth run back in 2019, she finished sixth in a fairy house, um, 23 runner hurdle behind Ronald Pump, which was a good bit of form and then finished second next time out. Um, at uh, Punchestown so then she hasn't really been seen much over three miles of course she was second behind Great White Great White Shark at Punchestown back in 2020 over this trip before Great White Shark went and won the Cesarowicz and then of course hacked up over two miles six and a half furlongs at Limerick before obviously winning very comfortably at Kempton I think there's just a lot more to come from her over this trip and we know what Willie Mullins is like we go on about Willie Mullins whenever he comes over uh, to Britain all the time but he only comes here for one reason and that is to win um, and he's going I think he may go in uh, I think she may go in here I mean she's got a great chance and I just can't really trust the rest no, I'm completely with you there. So Jack and I, uh, both with my sister Sarah in the Mayor's Hurdle at Ascot. Here we go. All right, let's get into it. It's the big one. Uh, everyone's looking forward to this. I'm hoping it, I really do. Fingers crossed this does happen. 3.35 at Ascot. It's the Clarence House Chase, a grade one, over two mile, one furlong. Shishkin is best prize, four to six. Enigamain is 15 to eight. First flow, 11 to one. And Amula Gold is 100 to one in here. Um, I think... In regards to comments this week, do comment down with your selection with this race. I'd be intrigued to see people's opinions for this race. But it is some battle, this. It really, really is. Shishkin was mightily impressive at Christmas. Um, I was very impressed by this horse. And I'll, there's one thing I like about this horse. I like the fact this horse likes to be woken up. It's almost like he goes around the track going, God, this is slow. This is so boring. Come on, Nico. When are you going to ask me? Ask the horse. It takes a little while. And then the horse, in my opinion, visually, just seems to look like he's getting quicker and quicker as he gets to the line. It really is impressive the way this horse goes about things. And the Enega Main, a horse who looks a right stunner. I really do love the look of this horse. It's just interesting because I think that the harder they go in this race, it's hard to say, but I think it could even suit both of these horses. It's just a really difficult race because tactically there's four runners. They could go very steady here and it could turn into a sprint finish and I would have no idea who I'd be siding with in that one there. But Enigma Main jumps right-handed, potentially better suited to Ascot. Shishkin jumps marginally left-handed, maybe a slight thing that goes wrong for this horse. Jack, I tell you what, has anyone got a ladder? Because I need to get off this fence. Yeah, goodness me, you do. You really do. <laughs> Look, 
I mean, it is a, you're, you're allowed to sit on the fence for this one. I mean, they are both yeah. exceptional. I mean, you look at the ratings of 172 and 171. The people who make the ratings up can't even split them. So, I mean, it's interesting. I think Shishkin, he's just, I love watching him jump over a fence. I mean, he corrects himself. He's got such a big brain. The way he moves it is a sight for sore eyes. I mean, watching him in full flow is absolutely insane. And again, I've never really been able to warn to him. Um, he's just a little bit fragile for me. I think, again, like Shishkin, he's a top class performer. Don't get me wrong. But I think Shishkin has the edge. I think he probably should be three or four pounds higher than uh, um, Enigamain, if I'm being honest. I think he's probably beaten a tiny bit more. I know they both haven't really beaten too much, but I think Shishkin's beaten maybe a tiny bit more. And I don't think the, the jumping left-handed marginally or the jumping right-handed for Enigamain will have too much of an issue because hopefully the class will tell with Shishkin. But the only thing for me is it reminds me a lot of um, Envoy Allen versus Monkfish last year. And it really would not surprise me if the experience of first flow told here. And I do think a double figure price uh, as a win bet is really not the worst way to go. I mean, he absolutely hacked up in the Clarence House last year, beating Politolog. It was a little bit workman, like I thought last time out when he won. But I, I still think, I mean, even though he is 10 to 1, he's a little bit older. He's got a lot more experience than the other two. I just think it could turn into a little bit of a battle for the first, for the top two in the market. And I really wouldn't be surprised for, for first flow to pick up the pieces. I think Shishkin probably is the one that I'd side out of the two. But I mean, at 8 to 13, 7 to 4, I think the only bet in the race is going to be first flow for me as a win bet at a double figure price. Yeah, um, I mean, I, got, I actually got a message from a friend the other day who said uh, the rumours from the Willie Mullins stable is that Enigam means a monster. And I said, yeah, but I just looking at Shishkin can tell you now that he's a monster as well. Um, it'll be really intriguing to see. I do kind of hope that it isn't a romp for one of these horses in some ways, because I'd love to see them both go to Cheltenham and it happen again. If there was a length between them or a couple of lengths between them, you know, I'd love to be able to see that and then go up against each other. I think if one of these goes and romps this, they're probably going to have the more than that, just an upper hand at Cheltenham. Um, and I think we're going to see a heavy favourite, especially if Shishkin goes in with easy. I think we're going to see potentially a, a twos on favourite here, potentially um, for the champion chase in March. It really is some battle. I think I'd be with Jack in some ways that you know, first flow is no mug in here. He really isn't no mug um, and needs to be taken seriously. Um, I was actually speaking to a friend again today about that uh, clash that you said, Jack Envoilen versus Monkfish. And they do end up in, turning into these sort of races where they just focus on each other and another horse will come and pick up the pieces. Um, I know we didn't see that on Champions Day with Baid and Palace Pier, but I did say to you, I just hope that Frankie doesn't focus on Jim Crowley in that race and ignores the rest of the field because it could, you know, turn the race against him. And it kind of did in some ways. But that's how I see this race here is that I hope they just don't focus on each other because if they do then first flow is going to be sitting there and, and we'll try and pick up the pieces of what could be a messy scrap up front. So really intriguing battle. I genuinely cannot wait to see it. And I'm sure we'll talk about it on our championship race and um, preview, our anti-post preview. Obviously, that'll be part of the champion chase discussion. So I'm looking forward to discussing a review of that race there. Um, but yeah, like I say, let us know in the comments who you'll be siding with on Saturday for the Clarence House. Let's go in. To our best bets, Jack. Um, I have got a nap and next best this week. Um, I'll let you do both in a row here. I'll let you do your nap and next best both at the same time. Okay, the nap. I'll start with the nap. It's going to be today on Friday, in fact. So it's hopefully going to be fastest fingers first. And the first race at Lingfield is in the Mayor's Novices Herd, or over two miles on heavy ground. And I'm going to be with Nurse Susan. I'll be very impressed with her the last twice. She beat, um, I thought, a relatively all right field when beating the Bill champion last time around. Harry Skelton still hasn't actually resorted to the whip just yet. So I think I love the way she gets through heavy ground. She should be able to. She's got a lovely knee action. She should be able to relish the conditions tomorrow. Of course, everything is very unexpected but there's been a little bit of money coming for her as well. She's around two to one, so hopefully she'll be able to stake her mare's novice hurdle claims and again, hopefully relish the conditions at Lingfield. And the next best, no one's going to like to hear this, but I think first flow is just way too big a price. We've seen it happen before. Uh, we may see it again. I'll, I'll happily be proved wrong with, with the two, the first two in the market finishing first and second in any order. But first flow at 10 to one, I think it's an absurd price. He looks back to his best. He has a lot more experience than the other two and maybe that will tell. Cool. The kahunas are out for Jack with first flow <laughs> in the Clarence house. That is a bold shout. I mean, it's a fair shout. It'll be interesting to hear, you know, how many people are actually fancying this horse on Saturday. But, um, you know, like I say, a lot of people focusing on this big clash, but ignoring the one in here that could still potentially go and win this. 
my nap of the weekend is going to be remastered. I really do like this horse. I'm probably going to give him this as a last chance, but potentially he could either win this or go in and, and sort of end up, you know, being slid out of the back, keep a marker 146, end up going to an ultra and winning that. Um, that would be a dream because I've been shouting for this horse to go for the Ultima for months now. And my next best, no one is ever going to want to hear this. Comes on Sunday at Lingfield in the 225, which is a two mile four hurdle going left handed. And the horse's name begins with a G and ends in Oshin. Can I hang up? Am I allowed to hang up? This, I, I, no, you can't. You can't do this. You're losing cannot, respect to the room here. Okay, you're gonna have zero credibility. Can I make my point on why <laughs> I'm? This horse is it looks like it's gonna get heavy ground, which Gary Moore has singly pointed out, and we all know the horse prefers heavy going. The horse has always looked like he wanted to step up in trip. He's now got this step up in trip. But why are they sending this horse left-handed? I still question this. But there's obviously faith. Goshen is showing something at home. He clearly is showing something at home to say, I'm ready. He's around 15 to 2. I will back him each way. He will be in each way uh, next best. He's actually going up a, a, against the horse so I, I also adore, and that's Star of Star. But I think it's a right threat in here. But Goshen, oh, I'm never going to give up with this horse. Um, they need to retire him soon just to save myself. Um, but Honestly, yeah, it's going to be Goshen. I think I'm wearing well. a Modern Games Breeders' Cup hat. I think Modern Games has more of a chance of winning over two and a half miles than Goshen. <laughs> Kidding me. <sighs> oh, I think that's the best way to probably end this preview of the weekend. Um, and I just can't wait. God, I tell you what, if Goshen wins, I'll, I'll actually film the race and I will upload to our Twitter the reaction of me watching the race. Because if he does go and win, I can say, you now I'm going to go absolutely bonkers. But look, Subscribe to the channel if you haven't already. <laughs> Thanks for watching and we will see you on Tuesday for our anti-post championship race preview.